Charles Jackson. Um, very excited about the African American Men's Health Conference. It went extremely well. We've gotten so much information out there. I just want to thank you all for coming out. And some of the signs of, uh, of um, mental illness is not easy to diagnose. You have to actually really yourself, you have to know whether you're waving to the right or waving to the left, whether you're constantly up or constantly down. Once you realize that, then you should seek some help. Uh, and like I said before, we do have the referrals. We do have a large database of health providers. You can just call us and we'd be more than willing to, to help. Uh, if you find yourself over anxious, very irritable, uh, then it's time. And with the least little thing, uh, you're very irritable about, then I think it's time for you to see some kind of help. It's important to see your, your primary care physician or family physician first because sometimes that's a medical condition like a thyroid disorder. Um, but it, you know, it's important to, to obviously just go seek help and advice about, you know, I don't think I feel right. Um, and then you'll know, let us try and do some more work to figure out where you need to go. Mental health may be one, but it's important to acknowledge there are other treatable conditions that also can be causing behavioral changes. Is how can we reach the generation under us? I mean, I know a lot of times we wait to be low. Well, I've been in the medical field all my adult life, so I know that I was constantly going there. When my father died at a heart attack at 53, I was 30, so that's when I went. But how do you reach the younger generation under us? You know, I. I appreciate that question. Uh, just just this week uh, in my office, I had a, a patient who is in her 60s, and we've been talking for some time about uh, getting her blood pressure under better control, and it had been somewhat of a struggle. And, and then she, she told me, well, she's really, really trying to cut down on the amount of salt that she eats. The problem is that she has her great son. And, and I said, well, why is that a problem? She says, well, she buys all this stuff for him. Um, and then she ends up eating her, herself. So the, the natural question from that is, well, if I'm telling you it's not good for you, why are you buying it for him? And, and that left her with a, with a puzzle, no? where she kind of caught herself between going, you know, you're right. Why am I doing that? But again, any, any of you who have children or, or grandchildren that you uh, spend time with know just how difficult it is if you have a child with you to drive past McDonald's. It's hard. Uh, but, but that is what we have to do. Uh, we have to begin by not teaching the bad habits that we have uh, to the next generation. I think you're absolutely right about that. Next question. Yeah, it's a holistic or viable treatment for a certain medical conditions, or it's just sort of like a type of placebo. Uh, well, I, if you're, I mean, that's a, a big category you're talking about, but there are uh, things uh, we call alternative medicine, uh, your meditation, yoga, uh, some acupuncture. Some of those certainly have some benefits. It's you know it's not a one cure thing uh, that can you, you still need a comprehensive approach depending on your condition. But uh, I mean, yoga I know can make a big difference for a lot of people. Um, but it depends on the condition. You know, I think you know with respect to high blood pressure, you know that's a stress can make blood pressure high, but just your genetics can make blood pressure high. You know, if you don't have high blood pressure by the time you're 50, is it greater than 
percent chance you're going to develop it in the rest of your lifespan. So, you know, I think practicing good, healthy eating habits and all that is important, but you can't deny the fact that you may still have high blood pressure and use medication. You know, yoga, practicing yoga and Ayurveda, stuff like that may be good in minimizing the number of medications you have to take for blood pressure, but you still have to acknowledge you have that diagnosis and you're going to need some treatment for it. What I tell my patients is, look, um, I, I think that holistic or alternative medicine is a good thing. Uh, I, I didn't train in, in that. I trained in what we do, which is uh, medical medicine. Uh, but I don't think it's a, it's a bad thing. And I encourage people because, after all, you know, one of the things we want to do is, is simply to feel better. And, and um, I think that you can get a lot of that from a variety of different uh, approaches, but we don't want to do it to the extent where, for example, we miss out on diagnosing prostate cancer because we weren't following the medical doctor's advice to keep up on our, our screening. And at the end of what, what you said, you said, well, is it just a placebo? Um, don't underestimate placebo. I have a, a story I tell to my students to help them understand just just how uh, placebo works and how powerful it is. And it has something to do with our analogy this morning, Dr. Robinson, on cars. Uh, when you get your car detailed, show of hands, some of the people this year got their car detailed at least once. You wash it yourself, even better. And it doesn't have to be the fancy detail that Dr. Robinson uses on his $100 dollar car. It, even if you go and wash it yourself, or if you spend 20 or 100 bucks on it, here's what happens. I find this, and you tell me if this isn't your experience. When all the work's done, and you get back the key, and you get behind the wheel, and you start it up, there isn't a soul in the world can convince you that it's not running smoother, is it? <laughs> I mean, you know nobody went under the hood. Uh, but you put all that work in, you can see through the windscreen is sparkling, and when you crank it up, the engine runs smoother. So don't don't estimate placebo. It's important, and and you know we want to be healthy and we want to feel better. That's a good analogy. <laughs> Any other questions?
Grief is very unique, and there's no time limit on grief. When a loved one passes, you're moving from a physical relationship into a spiritual one, and it takes time. Tears are healing, and it could be anything that might bring that feeling back to you. It could be just a song or something. But that's all a part of the process until you reach the point of acceptance. Let's stop Lenny Strand, by the way, from our first panel. Those of you who may get it later. He's one of our experts. Can we mention something about stress? How stress causes people to be sick and long working hours? You know, I notice on my job, um, working three 12-hour shifts. Some jobs and some of my co-workers work seven day, um, 10 hour shifts, seven days off and um, seven on and seven on and seven off, but they 10 hour shift, how they can cause a person to be um, sick in their body along with stress. Stress is uh, a part of life. Um, the art to stress is managing it. Now, each and every one of us must know our limitations. When we find that things are putting us to a point that we stay riled up all the time, all the time we are riled up, then we should start slowing ourselves down. Welcome you. Man. For those of you, first of all, good morning. We like to welcome you to one of the greatest places where something was happening today. You know what happened out here today? We had the African American Men's Health Conference. We had vendors all over the place. We had doctors all over the place. We gave out all kind of information. If you missed it, you missed the treat. We're going to show you some of the inserts and some of the things that happened here. We couldn't get everything because there was so much going on, but we hope you enjoy what we are going to present to you. Oh, things are possible when God is in your life I remember what he said to me in my dream take a step towards my door everything will be all right you'll see he held out his hand to me I'll never forget God's glory Surrounded me All things are possible When God is in your life, I say, all things are possible. When God is in your life. I'll never forget what he said to me in my dream Take a step towards my door Everything will be alright, you'll see He held out his hand to me I'll never forget Surrounding me I remember that day A change came over me From that day 
I got something I want to tell you right now. Without God, I would not be here. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? Without God. Did you hear what I say? Did you hear what I say? Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Without God, I need Him. He's my strength. He's my all in all. Give God. The glory. Beep. 